Okay, so today we are going to continue our look at solving equations. So the first thing I want you to do is tell me, how do you know that something is an equation? Has an equal symbol or an equal sign, if you want to call it that. An equal symbol, good. And the equations that we're solving don't have any exponents, which makes them what? Linear. Linear. Good job. Then... And linear solving linear equations, our whole goal to do that is to get our variable completely by itself, and we'll accomplish that by doing the opposite operation. Okay? So we have a series of steps, so hopefully you're looking at those notes. The first thing you do when you're solving any equation is what? Clear the brackets. Okay. So clear the brackets first, if you have any. Second thing. Clear the fractions, and we haven't talked about doing that, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Third step, like terms that are on the same side. Good job. Remember, you're not moving anything back or forth yet. You're only looking at one side of it and combining any like terms that are on the same side. Those three steps are designed to clean the equation up, get it ready to solve. Then we can actually start solving it by doing the fourth step, which is what? Get all the variable terms on one side. Good. Variable term means anything with a letter in it. Any term that has a letter in it needs to move either to the right or the left. Does it matter? Absolutely not. So just put, get them all on one, t- on one side. And as you're going through, you're going to see that sometimes one side might be better than, better than the other. And we'll talk about that when we do some more examples. After I get all my variable terms on one side, then what? Get all my constant terms on the other side. Good. So your variable terms will tell your constant terms what to do. So in other words, if my variable terms are on the right, or I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, then my constant terms will move to the what? To the right-hand side. And remember, a constant is something that has no letter in it. And then finally, the very last step is to... There you go. Divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable term. So what if it was 2x? What would I divide by? 2. Two. What if it's negative 3x? What would I divide by? Negative. negative 3. So remember, don't forget that sign when you're dividing. Okay? And we want that variable to be completely by itself. So we did some examples of those, and hopefully you've did, done some more of those in your homework. You're going to get to see some more today, but the one, what we're going to concentrate on today are we're gonna talk about equations that have fractions in them. So let's just talk a little bit about what we already know. We already know that a fraction has a numerator and a what? Denominator. Denominator. And what operation is indicated by the fraction bar? Division. Division. So fractions are simply a way of writing division. And we're solving equations and the, (coughs) excuse me, and the basic rule or method for solving solving equations is to use the opposite what operation. operation so if you have division what do you think you're going to use to eliminate that division multiplication. multiplication and remember that we can do anything we want to an equation as long as we do it what equally, equally right so could i multiply a fraction by five yes. yep as long as i also multiply what Every other thing by five. Everything. So every term by five. Get it? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate the division by using multiplications. So let's talk about how to clear fractions. To clear fractions from an equation, and that is a really important part of of what what you need to learn. You can only do this if it's an equation. I am not giving you permission to get rid of any fraction you see for the rest of your life. If you don't see the equal symbol, then you can't do this. Okay? So to clear the fractions from an equation, first, find the LCD, least common denominator. Remember, we spent quite a bit of time doing that. When you're talking about finding the least common denominator, say I have something over two and something over four. Two divides evenly into four, so we would use four as our LCD. Now, 
if you get if you if it if it's uh, if you get in a pinch and you don't remember that, then two times four would give you what? Eight. And eight would eliminate the fractions, but it's going to make all your numbers bigger than they have to be. Okay. So if you do panic and just multiply them together to find the common denominator, that will work. But the com least common denominator for two and four is four. All right. So you'll practice that if you if it's been a while. Step two, multiply every term by that LCD. And underline every term. Because we're not just going to multiply the fractions, but every single term. Because if we multiply one thing by five, we have to multiply everything by five. We have to do it equally to, main, to, to maintain the equality or the balance in our equation. So if I had five things, I would multiply all five of them by five. Okay? All right. Now, when you're dealing with the fractions, when you're multiplying, what's really happening is you're going to simplify then multiply what's left times the numerator. Okay, and again, this is for the fractions. And we're going to look at several of these and look at this pattern. But remember when it's simplifying means to divide away anything that's common to numerator and what? Denominator. You're reducing or simplifying. So all you're going to do is simplify. And because we're using the LCD, I know that the denominator is going to divide completely away. That's the whole point when we're, and the reason why we're using the LCD is because I want that denominator to divide completely away. It has to disappear. Okay? So keep that in mind as we go. So say, for example, we had 3 over 4. And again, this is not an equation. We're just practicing here. So, and uh, 7 over 8. Okay? What is the common denominator for 4 and 8? 8. It's the bigger one, right? If the smaller one divides evenly into the bigger one, then you can use the bigger one. But it's, it says least, but that just means the smallest thing possible. So it's always the bigger one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this one by 8, and I'm going to multiply this one by 8. Do you remember with it, when you're multiplying with fractions? Now, you can stick this in your calculator if you want to because you can use calculators. Or you can just remember that you're just going to divide away what's common. What's common to 8 and 4? Think bigger. 4. 8 divided by 4 is going to give you a what? 2. 4 divided by 4 turns it into a 1. So in other words, the denominator is gone, which is the whole point. So what's left to do in the numerator? 2 times 3, which gives you 6. So the, you've eliminated the fraction. The fraction is gone. Let's do this one. What's common to 8 and 8? 8. So they just divide away. What does that leave me with? 7. Okay. We're going to practice this a lot because all the, all, the, all the equations we do today are going to have fractions in them. Okay. You're just going to find the LCD, which is something, a skill that hopefully you remember doing. And then remember when you're multiplying fractions, before you multiply, you always simplify and then multiply what's left. Okay? And since there's not going to be anything left in the bottom, the only thing that you're going to be left to multiply with is going to be in the numerator. So let's go to the book and look at several of these because we're going to look at them in context. makes it a little easier to see. Okay. We'll start off fairly easy. So on page 158, number two, let's see. Um, we'll just do the first column together. So we have x over 2 plus 1 equals 3. So x over 2 plus 1 equals 3. Now, the first thing I want to talk to you about is 
that if you're going to write this down, do not cheat yourself. I know for some reason you have decided that you are the one individual person who is in charge of saving every tree on the planet, and so you want to write as small as you can. Get over it. The tree is dead. They are planting more trees. Use the paper to help you. If you, got, if you become a more successful student, and therefore a more successful person, then you can save a lot more trees than if you take too many shortcuts and not know what you're doing and have to work in a place where you kill trees all day. All right? Just use the paper. So if I was writing this, look how I wrote my fraction. It's not this, right? It's x over 2. And it would be better, now I just wrote this without the lines because I, was, I didn't have the lines. But it's better if you use the fraction bar as the lines. So if I were writing this on paper, it would be, look like this. x over 2 plus 1 equals 3. In other words, the only thing that's below that line is the denominator of the fraction. Do you see it? So if you have a fraction in your equation, write it using two lines of your notebook paper. Does that make sense? Now, I can't make you, but I can tell you that if you do this, you'll make fewer mistakes. And as you move forward, this, this equation is fairly easy, but as you move forward, you're going to end up with equations that look like this. x squared plus 3x minus 4 over x squared minus 9x plus 3x minus 4 over blah, 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 blah. And if you are not neat and organized here, then you will never be able to solve those. But... If you'll learn how to get into good habits now, then when you do go into the more complex ones, you'll already have that good habit. Okay? So use the notebook paper. Use the lines on your notebook paper as the fraction bars. Okay. Oops. Let's solve this one. First of all, I know it's an equation. How? Equal symbol. Good. So, and I know it's linear. How? No exponents. Good. Which really means an exponent of one. Good. All right. So, first thing I look for are brackets. Do you have any? Nope. What do you look for next? Fractions. Do you have any? Yes. So, I need to clear the fractions. In order to clear the fractions, the first thing I have to do is find the, what's it called? Lowest common denominator. But in this particular case, how many denominators are there? One. So if there's only one, it is the lowest common denominator. And I'm going to multiply that LCD times how many of the terms? Every term, you betcha. Okay? So I'm going to multiply that one by two. I'm going to multiply this one by two. And I've got to multiply the other side by two as well. Take the time to write it out. Every single one of those times two. Now here in the first one, two divided by two is just going to turn it into a what? One. Two divided by two is a one, so they just divide away. What does that leave me with from the fraction? Just an x. And it's not in the fraction anymore because the denominator divided away. If you don't have a denominator, you don't have a fraction. Right? Now, do the next one. What's 2 times positive 1? What's your signs? Make sure you write the signs really carefully. 2 times positive 1 is? Positive 2. Good. And finally, 2 times 3 is? 6. And notice that the numbers got bigger, but the fraction is gone. Would you rather work with bigger numbers or fractions? <laughs> bigger numbers, right. Okay? Now, it's just a simple linear equation. Are there any like terms on this side? Nope. Any like terms on this side? Nope. How many x terms do I have? One. So is it moving? No, because if I only have one, it's on one side. How many constant terms do I have? Two. So one of them needs to move. Which one? The positive two needs to get away from my x, right? And how do I move a plus two? Minus two where? 
on both, both sides, right? Over here, the x stays the same. The twos will subtract away. And over and on the other side, what's six minus two make? Is the x by itself? Then we're done. So x equals four. Okay? So it's very straightforward, but a process that you need to practice. Okay? Let's look at another one. Say we have x, sorry. Try again. Say we have, these are all very easy ones. X over three minus four equals negative one. Again, write it neatly. Make your fraction bar, make your notebook paper the fraction bar. Keep all signs on the numerate up with the numerators so that you don't lose them. What was that number? Was it a four? Three. A three, thank you. Ah, well, we'll call it a three, who cares? Not gonna make much difference. All right, notice that the only thing that's below this, this notebook paper line or that line on the paper is the denominator, and that's what it should be. The signs and all of the other two things are in the numerator, up in the top, right? Okay, we know it's an equation, how? There you go. So what do we look for first? Brackets. Bra brackets. brackets. Do we have any? None. Not yet. We will. Brackets. No brackets. What do we look for next? Fractions. Do we have any? Mm -hmm. Yes. In order to clear this fraction from an equation, the first thing I need to find is the what? LCD. LCD. But what's the only, only denominator I have up there? Three. Well, then three is your LCD. It's denominator D because it's in the denominator, okay? All right, so I'm gonna multiply every single term by three. So I'm gonna multiply this one by three, this one by three, and this one by three. You in order to keep it equal, you have to multiply them all. Now on this one, the threes are gonna simply divide away, and what does that leave me with on this side? X. X. What's three times negative four gonna make? Negative 12, excellent. And what's three times negative one gonna make? Negative three. Negative three. Is my x by itself? No. Nope. What's over there with it that I need to move? And I move that negative 12 by? Three. Adding 12 to both sides. There you go, good. That will subtract away. Gives me x equals, what is negative three plus 12? Positive nine. Positive nine. And there's your answer. <sighs> All right, now the process will not change, but you could have more fractions or more complex fractions. So let's just pop down to number four here. Look at some of these. So we have x plus one all over three equals four. Now again, one of the most important things is that you stay organized. So write neatly, write big enough, stay focused. So first of all, what kind of problem do I have here? An equation. And it's a, what kind of equation? Linear, because you don't see any exponents. Okay? If that's the case, what do I look for first? Brackets, do you have any? No. Nope. What do you look for next? Fractions. fractions, do you have any of those? Yes. yes. In order to clear the fractions from an equation, I need to find the what? LCD. LCD. What's the only denominator up there? Three. Well then, if the only denominator is three, the LCD is also what? Three. three. Now, I'm gonna multiply it times every term. Now look at this. That big fraction is only one term. This whole thing is one term because it's a fraction. Okay. Then we'll go to the other side and multiply that four times three as well. Okay. Now let's do the multiplication. On this side, the fraction, we're gonna simplify first. Three divided by three is gonna turn into a what? One, exactly. And we don't need to write the one because one times anything is the same thing you started with. So what's left from this side? x plus 1. Now again, 
the three is gone, so we're not going to multiply the top by anything because there's nothing to multiply with. That's not always the case. Sometimes you'll have stuff left, okay? And on the other side, three times four is 12. Now what? Now we'll just get the x by itself by subtracting one from both sides, which gives me x is equal to 11. And you're done. Now, you could check this if you want to by plugging it in and working it out. So that'll be x 11 plus 1 divided by 3 should equal 4. So that's 12 divided by 3. So 4 equals 4. Does it check? Yes. I'm never going to make you check it, though, as long as you're careful. As long as you're careful and you're following the processes, then you don't need to check it. What are we doing? Well, let's, not, let's stop doing the nothing and start doing the math. Okay. All right. Look at H. H is a little different because then you need to be really careful about what, what you have as your denominator. So we have 6x minus 2 all over negative 5 equals minus 2. Okay, again, write neatly. We know it's an equation because of the equal symbol. Equal symbol. There you go. Are there any brackets? Yeah. Fractions? Yeah. What do I need to have in order to clear the fractions? The lowest common denominator. But what's the only denominator there? Negative five. So we're going to multiply everything, each term, by negative five. So in this case, be careful because there's a, you not only have a five down there, it's a negative five. The negative five will divide away. What does that leave me with from the first side? Six X minus two. And on this side, what's negative 5 times negative 2 going to make? Positive 10. Positive 10. Good. All right. Then I want all my x terms on one side. How many x terms do I have, though? One. So is it moving? No. Then I want my constants on the other side. How many constants do I have? Two. Well, why isn't there three? Isn't six a constant? Nope. Six is a coefficient. Remember. Good. So, do I want to move the negative 2 or the positive 10? I need to move the negative 2 to be away from the x, right? And how do I move a negative 2? Plus 2 to where? Both sides. Get used to saying both sides, guys. So over here, that 6x won't change. The 2s will subtract away. And 10 plus 2 is 12. Is my x by itself? Nope. The 6 is connected by multiplication. So the opposite of multiply by 6 is what? Divide by what? Six. Which gives me x equals what? Two. And there's your answer. Right? If you know the steps, you know exactly what questions to ask when. Really simple. Equations are so much fun if you know how to do with them. Okay. Fun. I know y'all are thinking fun, huh? Okay. All right. Well, it looks like that's about as complicated as they get you, huh? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some of these, you're gonna practice some of these that have fractions in them. So let's just look at, last time we did the odds, so this time we're gonna be doing the evens. Now, I really want you to practice some of these for things, so you're just gonna do number four and number six. What is that? Uh, I'm sorry. Two and four and six. That's, so that's exercise 8F. It starts on page 158, and I know I'm not going to repeat this. You're going to do the evens. So two, four, and six. There you go.